Hey, what's going on guys? This is Melons, here with another video from Melons, Melons Better Driving. Uh, today I'm just basically just casually driving around the uh, Ford Falcon. I'm going to be chatting about some of the bigger changes that I'm going to be doing within the channel. I do not remember where this uh, Cirque Bugatti goes. Oh, I do not remember. But, yeah, I just wanted to say that upon the request of people whose opinions I take very seriously, I've been told to uh, make videos a little bit shorter and a little bit more interesting within that time frame, so that's exactly what I plan on doing. This video, I'm sort of going to feature you know, just a couple of the typical things that you would expect to see, something along the lines of, like, how to learn a new track, because that's exactly what I'm doing. Oh, this should be a double apex. I see. So, I'm taking this first lap a little bit slower than usual, just because I'm trying to figure out exactly where the track goes. I feel like this is a much tighter corner than the game's little arrows indicate, which I've turned them back on because I have no idea where this track goes. So long since I played more so. Oh, oh, oh! Okay, that curve is actually uh, pretty big. <laughs> Small burnout. Doing a good style. Oh, hey. That curve is also rather big. Okay, so stay off with some of the curves around right here. This is a double apex. I remember this corner. Oh, the noise of this V8 supercar. That's a good noise. More cars need this noise. <laughs> That's the first few corners from the uh, actual 24 hours. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second, wait a second. That seems like it happens earlier than it did in Forza. Okay. This corner, I think I've got it under control right now. There's not much grip with this car. I feel like there's a lot of grip. I'm on the slick compound soft tires. Or slick soft compound tires, I guess I should say, because the compound is the uh, material that it's made of. There we go. That's a better exit out of that corner. So you can kind of come along with me as I'm learning the track, because I'm sort of discussing as I go along how I'm learning the track. This one I remember is pretty tight. Let's slow it down, try to get the apex. I mean, not a bad apex there. But I feel, I feel like I could carry more speed if I just barely nailed that first apex and then carried that speed around to the second one. That corner, you really have to stay off the curb, I remember that one. This one, you have to stay off the exit curb. Used a little bit of the entry curve on this one. Oh! Should maybe used a little bit less. Get on the throttle and out the corner on the other side and there you have a somewhat quick lap. Oh! Double upshift! Oh! Come on! Come on now, don't do that. The high downforce prototypes love to stick that corner right against the inside, but you just can't do that in a low downforce sort of touring car type car. Like this one. Oh, I see. You should take a wider entry into that last corner then. Oh, and of course, when you carry more speed out of one corner, suddenly your braking point will change for the next one. That's an interesting thing to note. That's one of the things that you need to consider when you are changing up your racing line, trying to learn a new track. Ooh! 
<laughs> Maybe a little too much throttle coming out of there. You have to keep racing fun. No matter what else you do, honestly, racing should be fun. Like, if you don't laugh about when you spin the tires and drive like a hoonigan, then you're doing something terribly wrong. Because... I, I don't know, I just genuinely feel like if you are not enjoying racing, something is terribly wrong. And the same thing with drifting. I know that... Hashtag keep drifting fun has been a really popular thing. But I haven't seen the same thing about racing. And I, I feel like it's either because it's always been fun and people don't really have that competitive edge sometimes. Or I feel like it's a lot better to lift off that. No. You've got to use more brakes going into that corner. Anyways, as I was saying, I feel like the drift to keep drifting fun scene is an amazing hashtag, but I feel like it could also apply to racing. Let's try to keep racing fun too, you know? Just, you can't really take racing too seriously. And I love it, and it's amazing, but I enjoy it more now that I've stopped sort of like crying about losing races and whatever, and just enjoyed actually having the fun being out at the track and so on. And that's a lot of what track days taught me, it's that Track days, you know, you can time yourself and you're improving yourself, but you're not racing anybody else, so you're not really going against that other person thinking, damn, I must be faster than them. And it's not like competitive to the point of almost hating your job as a driver. No, like, you go out to a track day and your idea is just, how fast can I go without putting my car into a wall? Well, Whoa, forgot about that curb. That curb is vicious. Oh, I can't see. Frame rate, frame rate, come back. Frame rate, uh-oh. Damn it, I don't know what. Did I just hit something? Okay, frame rate's back. Sorry about this, I just don't currently have the money to get the new CPU that my computer requires for running Project Cars, but Project Cars has this car and this track and everything that I've just... I've been dying to consider new tracks and stuff, like a lot of the tracks that race room I've already played, I've already mastered them. I wanted to try something different. I, didn't, I, can't, I don't think I can remember the last time that I came to the Sirki Bugatti in uh, any racing game except for Forza. I don't think that many other games even have this layout of the uh, Le, Mans, Le Mans circuit, I guess you could say. I don't... I kind of want to avoid calling it that because it's not just one circuit, it's a group of circuits, as I'm clearly demonstrating. This is the always closed off, not roads, like, not public roads that are closed off for the weekend, but an actual track. Whereas you've got other tracks and whatever that are uh, a little bit better off. If that makes sense. Like, a lot of people will say that the Circuit de la South, the uh, 24 hour circuit, is a better track. And that's an amazing track, yeah, for sure. It's a great track. But the problem is that you can't race there every weekend because it's still public roads. You know, it's public roads that connect three or four small villages. So, to close them off like every weekend, kind of a bit ridiculous because it causes major headaches. Uh oh, uh oh, frame rate again. Come on. I have no idea where I'm driving right now. Judging by the sound, it just hit a curve. Oh, there we go. make do with what you've got, but <laughs> in the case of public roads, you cause such a chaotic thing for everybody who isn't into racing. They just wonder, like, when is the racing going to go away? But you have to sort of understand that if you live near Le Mans, you're going to hear about the racing. You're going to deal with it. You're going to deal with the traffic during that, what is it, second weekend of first weekend or second weekend of uh, July, I think it is, or is it June? 
um, whenever they have the race in 24 hours. They have to close down a bunch of the track. Like a bunch of the roads for the track. But when you have the circuit that I'm on right now, which is called the Seoki Bugatti, uh, the Seoki Bugatti, it doesn't have the same, how do I say, requirements. You don't have to close down all of France for it, pretty much. Oh my god, I cannot deal with this. The frame rate has dropped down to zero frames per second. We're at six. There we go. I'm really sorry about the fact that I just can't continually consistently drive. And I'm hoping that this video will make up for it in just terms of just being an awesome video in terms of just seeing a guy who actually learned to track throughout the time, but it's hard to see how much I'm learning when I can't really consistently show consistent improvement without the occasional sort of glitch within the frame rates and CPU is like, whoa, too many physics, can't handle it. Which, by the way, thanks Project Cars for being really obnoxious about your uh, CPU requirements. Because the GPU on my computer is a very good kit. It's one of the best on the market, and I know nothing about computers, but my friend Milan, he uh, built me this PC, and I paid a pretty good penny for the uh, graphics card on this. And the graphics card is not the problem, but actually a CPU is the problem that's preventing me from, for one thing, having more than one car on the track at a time, as I would love to do later on, but also from preventing me from just driving consistently as it is right now without having perpetual frame lock, or whatever you want to call it. Whee! Keep racing fun! I want to make that a hashtag. fix complete. We're gonna go out with fresh tires and then we're gonna see just how fast we can go around this track. Looks like I've maybe got a minute until the session is over though. <laughs> oh, this car just loves to spin its rear tires for days, but somehow it doesn't spin, it doesn't complain, it just sort of focus at the steering wheel a little bit. I love this car for that. It's, it's the same thing that I found in Gran Turismo with this car as well, but this car just, anytime you drive the Ford Falcon V8 supercar, it always just seems to want to like step out sideways without completely spinning out. And I don't know what trickery they did with the... I feel like it's the caster in its hook that makes it... Oh! As I was saying, this car doesn't like to spin out a lot, um, but there is some trickery going on with the uh, toe in the caster that they really mastered it. Unless you're on grass, or unless you really are an idiot with still somewhat cold tires. Both of which I was just doing.
track combination are very good though. This is a properly fun track and car combination. I love it. Can I get it slowed down in time? Yes, I can. can I get on the throttle for this corner exit here and try to carry as much speed and see if I can get one more lap out of this? Yes, I can. Now let's see what sort of a hot lap we can do. Now that we've sort of spent 15 minutes acclimatizing to a new track. You know, without hitting something. Oh, I really should have been a little bit earlier on the brakes there. In order to not be as tight through that first part of the chicane there. But it's fine because I can gather it back up through the second part here. Let's try to break down into... Uh, what would this be? I guess turn four. Try to stay along the apex there. Come out of the corner, a little bit of opposite lock just to keep the car's back end from swinging out too much. Remember, be a little bit gentle on the throttle coming out of this corner. We're going to go onto the throttle full the throttle and carry as much speed down through as possible. Back down the gears into second gear for this double apex. Oh, I love that you just get the slightest amount of wheel spin there on that corner exit. It just feels fast when you're out of that corner. I kind of get the idea I'm breaking a little bit early in some of these corners, but it's fine. I'm going to keep the car well balanced and well poised through the corner, and I'm still going to carry just the right amount of speed through the corners to not crash or spin the wheels or do anything silly. This has been a good lap. Just got to make sure I don't screw it up in the last corner, get onto that apex here. That's a good lap. And that lap time shows for it. 139 is a fairly, fairly good lap around here. Let's see if I can improve on it with just keeping in mind the mistake that I made last lap in this corner and a couple of other small, smaller mistakes. That back end is active! I'm using a bit too much throttle coming out of that, I guess, it's turn three. <laughs> it's not very often that you get tire smoke coming on a time attack lap. I mean, you shouldn't do that. Don't do that. But hella fun! And again, hashtag keep racing fun. was a full-on drift to that corner. Oh, I'm a little late on the brakes there. Oh, and the system doesn't complain about me cutting the track. Awesome! Okay, maybe I cut the track a little bit there, yeah. But it didn't kill me in terms of the uh, penalty ruining my lap, so that was still a pretty good lap. I'm going to do one more lap where I'm going to try to tie everything together and see if we can get into the 138s just by running our consistent smooth laps that we've learned by just running sort of consistent trial and effort, or trial and error effort, I should say. Because half the time when you're learning a new track, a lot of times it causes doubt of that, especially on a track like this where you've got big runoff rooms. Completely ready for the FIM motorcycle standards and the WEC or whatever, in some cases some parts of the track. The WEC wouldn't come through this part, but the other parts? We've got big runoff room. Really gotta use it to its benefit. I kinda do. Oh, it worked! 
Oh, I'm slow through there. Maybe I can gather it back up in the last corner. Oh, frame rate. Damn it, frame rate. That was not the time for frame rate jitter. Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. Yep. Frame rate jitters are not good. Well, that was uh, not the way that I wanted to end the video, which was supposed to be about trying to get faster laps and everything, but you know what? I think it's safe to say that I should really get to upgrading the uh, CPU on my computer. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. Subscribe, comment, like, do whatever you will. If you liked the video, please tell me why. Didn't like the video? Go ahead and tell me why. Like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't like it, share it, comment, do as you will please, because anything like that helps me to bring out content that you will enjoy. So this video, because I've attempted to make it a lot uh, shorter and a lot more interesting, I hope that you will notice that and see that it's only going to be about 20 minutes long this time, which is much shorter than usual. but. Especially, wanted to say thanks for the advice that my friend Sammy did give me in telling me to shorten up the video. And this is the sort of thing that happens when people give me the feedback. I will use it into the next videos. I will do as the uh, fan request. And certainly I do appreciate when people share, comment, post, do as you will in order to grow this channel out and then your requests will be seen by more people and everything should be much more exciting when that happens. So, thanks for that and have a good one.